If you're launching your streaming career on Kick, already a full-time Twitch partner or any type of streamer in between, you're going to want a capable and powerful streaming PC. If it's time to upgrade, you'll want the latest and greatest CPU that Intel has to offer. They're the best, right? A lot of people consider them to be more reliable of the two brands. And if that's what you're comfortable using anyways, but all of a sudden the two latest versions of Intel processors, the 13th and 14th generations are all experiencing issues. Do you get a three-year-old Intel processor? Do you make the leap to AMD and hope that it works? Or maybe you simply risk it, get a 14th gen i7 processor and hope everything just works out. There are a lot of options at the moment, but let's talk through them so that you can make the absolute best possible decision for yourself. Now, if you weren't aware of these issues and you wanna dive into the full nitty gritty of it, I definitely suggest watching Level 1 Tech's video about it. I'll make sure to link it down below. Otherwise, here's the TLDR. Almost all of the 13th and 14th generation Intel CPUs have faulty microcode that's causing the processors to request higher voltage levels over their safe limits. Couple that with a manufacturing defect affecting the anti-oxidation coating that's exacerbating the problem and this can completely burn your CPU out. So what exactly are your options at this point? Well, pull up a stool, let's go over the options so that you can feel as confident as possible making your decisions. Cheers, Intel. Thanks for making this all happen so that we can open up this conversation. We all know that you've got enough on your plate right now, so this one's for you. All right, so if you're looking at building a new streaming PC right now, here are some of your options. Your first and probably safest option, if you absolutely need an Intel CPU right now, is probably getting something a bit older. Not to mention much cheaper, especially if you go the used route, the 12th generation and older processors are not affected by these recent issues, so you don't have to worry about any of that. The Intel i9-12900K, the 12th generation Intel powerhouse CPU, is on par, if not more powerful than most AMD equivalents still to this day, even if it is showing its age a little bit. The 16 cores and 24 threads are enough for gaming, streaming, and video editing, that that's actually the CPU I've been using in my personal machine for a couple of months now. Uh, you can actually check out that video if you want to see a purple PC with a giant 10 inch screen installed in it. Outside of that, the i7-12700K is also still very capable, having 12 cores and 20 threads available. The 13700K affected by that issue is maybe 10% more powerful at best, most would also argue that the upgradability of this socket is also great to have. Um, the ability to move up to the 13th or 14th generation C CPUs, if Intel ever decides to fix these issues and continues to sell them, will be nice to have that in your back pocket if you go with the 12th generation as well. And depending on the games you're actually streaming, I highly recommend the i5-12600K right now. It's one of the best values for your money and should be more than enough for most esports titles, just chatting streams and things like that. I actually also talked about this CPU and a couple of great GPUs to combo with it in this video over here. If this is your favorite option, I'd recommend at this point you wait just a couple of weeks to see what Intel ends up doing with their newer processors. They've said that they'll be releasing microcode updates for the 13th and 14th generation CPUs by mid-August. Once everybody has a chance to thoroughly test and review all of those changes, these could turn back into viable options. And honestly, if you're planning on waiting for just a bit anyways for, in, for an Intel CPU, most people are speculating that the new Arrow Lake CPUs should be arriving by the end of the year. Now, I could see Intel pushing the launch date back a little bit so that they have enough time to fully test and make sure that they don't have any similar issues though. But I could also see them pushing the date up to give everybody something actually worthwhile to buy and just take the rest of the 13th and 14th gen chips off the market. Now, while Intel is completely redesigning this chip and at the moment they're promising 15 
to 25% per performance increases, we shouldn't have to worry about dealing with these same types of issue the 13th and 14th generations are going through right now. But with that being said, you will still be dealing with a sort of first gen type of product though with all the new processes Intel is implementing. All right, so I know that Intel may be the direction you want it to go with your next CPU, but any stereotypes you had about AMD probably aren't true anymore. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D is one of the most pop, if not the most popular gaming CPUs of all time, and it will be more than enough if you're wanting to play and stream games at the same time. Will it be as quick as an i9 at, at rendering video? No, definitely not. But will it still be able to do that stuff? Yes, 100%. And AMD also offers CPUs that are a bit more productivity focused as well. Chips like the Ryzen 7 7700X or the Ryzen 9 7950X adds on to that with more cores. Contrary to popular beliefs, these processors are more than capable of gaming, streaming, and video editing. And being the first generation on the AM5 platform, most people are in love with the idea of upgradability in the coming years. Now, it seems like waiting is just kind of the name of the game right now, as AMD also has their new line of 9000 series CPUs arriving very shortly. Although, that is kind of up in the air at the moment as well as their processors were originally scheduled to be released July 31st, but were subsequently pushed back a couple of weeks. We're still waiting on those to be sent out and fully benchmarked. AMD is promising August 15th at the moment, which if that happens, it will be much quicker than Intel's new offerings. Either way, if you are hanging out and waiting for new info on a processor, this is probably the best place that you can do that. Thank you for hanging out with me in the Pixel Pub. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to hang out more often. Cheers. All right, all right, all right. Now I know that the comments are gonna go crazy with this one, but I just wanna get it out there. I'm not recommending that anybody do this. And please, please don't come back to me if you do do this and then you have issues. But what I'm trying to say is that where these CPUs are still available, this 13th and 14th generations, even on the used market, prices are bottoming out. Nobody wants to deal with them. If you can pick up an ultra cheap 13th or 14th generation Intel CPU, try your hardest not to use it until about mid-August or so when Intel said that they'll be getting those BIOS and microcode updates available to hopefully fix these issues. You might just have scored a top of the line CPU for well under market value. I'm just saying. I'm not going to be trying it, but I'm just saying it's an option. It exists. Now, while Intel might be having some issues at the moment, they'll surely be back in action soon enough, and there will always be diehard, unwavering fans of the brand. If you're one of those people, I would definitely suggest checking out this full Intel build that my daughter and I put together last week using none other than the Sparkle Titan Intel Arc A770. It is quite the machine. that one.